Typically, the circle director will see you talking to the line judge and walk over and say, can I help out? And we'll work to get a resolution to what, uh, what the issue is. Make sense? All right. Some other policies we got here. All right. You get points for every game called sportsmanship points. Sometimes we call them honor points. Um, you have to do something or your players have to do something to not get those points. I'll give you a big example. Kicking a pin, all right? That will be viewed as unsportsmanlike conduct, all right? What about a fan? A fan, yes. We've actually had this happen where um, a parent didn't like a call on the floor and voiced his opinion very loudly to the circle director and the circle director pointed at him and said, what team are you for? And he turned around and said it, and he got the honor points taken off. So um, you're kind of responsible for your moms and dads. Um, but it, that has only happened once where a fan had to do something. But we have had to take honor points off of teams because three-legged race or something where one team passed another and they shoved the team to the ground. But it, again, this is the exception rather than the rule. Um, we use a computerized horn to start the game through the sound system. It's not a starting gun, and it's not an air horn, but it sounds like an air horn when it runs through the speaker system. All right. And last year, I screwed up, and I used horns instead of whistles for the sparkies. So I heard about that. Why does that do? Which one are we on here? You were talking about the, what they have to do to qualify. That's what just what I know. Yeah, it's, for some reason, it's giving me fits here. All right, we need to be wearing gym shoes or sneakers or whatever you want to call it on the floor. That's everybody that's on the floor, all right? We don't wear, you know, I don't care if there's six feet of snow out there. Don't have your kids come out there with their winter boots, all right? Um, clothing needs to be modest. Um, this is coaches and kids. Um, at the last practice you have, just have your kids wear what they're going to wear that day. Um, no yoga pants or the, you know, the, um, the tight-fitting stuff, all right? Um, no plumbers um, kind of thing going on with people, okay, it makes sense. The circuit director's got the final call on this, so they can say a player or even a coach cannot be on the floor if they're not dressed modestly. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. It has happened where we've had some coaches not be modest in their dress. Like last year that happened. Okay. So it's um, not, not like long ago, it was last year. So, all right. Did you have to say something? Um, I said something indirectly also to their um, commander. Um, so check your team beforehand, the last practice you have, then we won't have a problem there. Okay, what do we got? When should you actually show up for the event? You should show up 45 to 60 minutes before the event, all right? You come walking in with your team, maybe you caught the church bus, or maybe your kids come separately for, you know, their parents are all driving them. But one coach goes to the check-in table with all the necessary forms, filled out, hands those in, hands in the roster, so on. The other coach takes your kids and walks them onto the floor. You don't come up to the check-in table with 35 children, all right? You just come walking up there, one coach with a stack of papers. Oh, about that uh, parent permission form, you got two copies of that. One that you hand in to us at the check-in table and one that you keep for yourself, okay? So make sure you take a photocopy of those that get filled out. All right, and 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the start of the event, we have a coaches meeting in the center of the circle. All right, it's better if both coaches are there as opposed to one in case you had a question, but if your kids are rambunctious or whatever, one coach should be sitting with the team and then the other coach to the, the center of the circle. Does that make sense? That's not your last chance to ask questions, but it's close to it at that coaches meeting. All right, so you lined up 15 minutes beforehand on there. Um, and all the teams participate in the opening ceremony. We have 2 Timothy 2.15 that we're going to say out loud. Um, it would be nice if everybody knew it in King James, but that's okay. Um, we will do the national anthem and prayer and stuff. And then we start the games. So usually the games are actually starting, we're actually playing them within 10 minutes of the actual start of the event. All right? So rule clarifications. Touch pins. So there's no longer the center pin of the bean bag in the middle. It's only that for Sparkies. Um, we have what's called a touch pin. And the touch pin means you touch it with your hand, not a baton, not the balloon and balloon relay. You don't run in and kick it. Now, if somebody dives for it, 
and they got their hand outstretched and they miss it and their elbow hits it, that's good enough for us. All right? Okay? Uh, we have had issues 15 years ago where somebody dove in and didn't hit it with their hand, they hit it with their forearm, and the circle director didn't give it to them. We're not going to do that anymore, all right? So touching or knocking over a scoring pin, that touch pin, indicates that your team has completed the event. Now, why is that sentence in there? If we've got balloon relay, and this is notorious for this happening, as the first clubber brings the balloon around over their head to pass between your legs, that touch pin is not very far away. If they touch the touch pin, that team is indicated, they don't have to knock it over, that they have finished the event. Well, they haven't. They, the balloon didn't go through everybody's legs. If we're in basketball relay or beanbag relay, and the center person accidentally goes backwards and kicks the, the touch pin, you've just signaled that they finished the event. Does that make sense? They'll be disqualified is what I'm getting at there. Um, okay, so for TNT here, some participation thing. Every player needs to be in two, at least two events. For Division Four, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're going to be using all your kids in a lot of games. I mean, um, and I think it's really tough for Division II, um, if you've got five kids, for you not to have somebody in seven events. All right, so we're not a stickler on Division II on the maximum number of events, but they need to participate in two. Given that, if you have somebody that's special needs or something, and they physically can't participate in all the games, we had one young lady get pushed around in Sparkies in a wheelchair by their sibling. It was scary fast, how, how fast the, the sibling was pushing the wheelchair, but that, kid, that child wasn't going to be able to participate in Sparky Crawl or Balloon Pop, right? That was the only game that they could participate in. We're good with that. That makes sense? Okay. So that was Sparky's, also a TNT. If TNT, if you've got somebody that's special, you know, they can't do it, I play games, that's okay. We've got one little boy in our club that's uh, got some issues. I'm sure the only game he'll be able to participate in would be Beanbag Reaping. Um, running events, TNT, you're only allowed one running event, all right? We're not including three-legged races, a running event. And the tag rule, we'll go into that in a little bit of detail in a few minutes. That's only for three-legged races. So sprint, marathon, there's no longer catching the, the team in front of you and tagging them, and then they're out of the event, all right?